as well. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, should I just talk informally about uh, any topic or any specific, you know, topic of interest? Your your choice, but I would say that what my thought process was, you know, talk about the data because the value of data is extremely important. You know, data comes from different format and what is your experience? You have a lot of customers, you know, larger customers, yes. you work with them, you know, how do they deal with those kind of stuff? What is that, you know, AI, ML, machine learning, data science, why do they do it? And, you know, also add one more thing, the spice to it. As a woman, how, would they, how, how should they build their career? Okay, sure. Uh, I could start with the customer experiences first. So some of my uh, customer experiences with AIML, uh, I'm working with a large uh, global confectionery and a collector card company. And uh, one of their requests to us is that they want to personalize uh, their website. So depending on who logs in, they'll get a different uh, website experience, a different feel, uh, as well as since they deal with collector cards, they also wanted to find out if there's a way to recommend different collectors uh, different uh, holders of different cards, uh, recommend trading partners, uh, maybe even recommend cards that are missing from a certain person's collection. So they came up to us and they said, oh, this is our objective. You know, how can we help them? So one of the things we did is we worked backwards from the customer. So we uh, introduced a service. Uh, we introduced uh, Amazon Personalize. And we also talked about uh, managed blockchain. So we involved some specialists. Uh, we actually had a, a hands-on workshop, uh, what we call an immersion day with the customer. So the customer uh, became used to some of the services uh, with managed blockchain. Uh, they had a demo with our specialist and um, you know they became uh, familiar with some of our services. And now um, we're working with the CTO and trying to see how we can take that to the next step. So that's uh, one uh, real customer experience that I've worked with. Um, another interesting one uh, would be with uh, one of my other customers who is a global market research firm. So what they do is they collect a lot of survey data. Uh, like they might send out surveys about consumer preferences. Uh, like for example, uh, what do people from let's say a different region uh, prefer as far as car buying? You know, what are their habits as far as uh, you know, buying a car? Uh, what the preferences are for let's say different models, different types of cars or even let's say political affiliation or uh, demographics, like what age uh, are, are, you know, consists of the makeup from a different city, for example. So they collect a lot of user data. And one of the requests to us is that, you know, they present this, cost, this uh, data to the customers. And uh, one of the requests to us, how do they prevent fraud in that data? You know, is there a way to use machine learning to detect that kind of fraud? So right now we're working with them and uh, we're giving we uh, gave a high level overview of a SageMaker, and uh, you know they received a high level overview. They became interested, and they also received a, a hands on immersion day as well to get used to the service uh, with SageMaker. And now we're actually working with that customer to have a POC. So they've built certain models, and now they want to you know just get our assistance with a. Uh, it would uh, guiding them the, guiding them through using SageMaker for these models, and you know just helping them with deploying these these uh, models in production. So those are just uh, two examples of uh, some uh, real life AI ML uh, projects that I'm working on with customers. Um, any questions? Hello, ma'am. Yes. Hi. Uh, I'm Farhana. Uh, ma'am. Hi, Farhana. Uh, um, um, I want to know, uh, yes. as a customer, they didn't actually understand the technology very well. So That's how right. it will be for your experience? You are explaining them the technology and how they can adopt it as a general people. So what? Yes. what uh, how it will be difficult for you or it will be you easily explain them to general uh, people the technology? My yes. question is, is how tough or how difficult for you that pattern is? Um, so uh, we actually spoke with uh, different two different groups of people. The first one would be the executive. So the CTO is who we spoke with first. So that person gave us the vision of what they wanted to do. So at that level, we try not to get too technical. We would name the services, uh, the AWS service that, that can help them out. 
uh, but we try not to dive too deep into it, uh, because just to give them an idea of what's possible. And then from there, uh, we were introduced to the, uh, the team that actually would do the technical work and do the actual implementation. And that would be the uh, engineering team and the software development team. And that's when we became technical. So that's when we, we dive deeper. So uh, I think the, uh, the answer is, you know, depending on what audience you deal with, um, you would just tailor the messaging so that they would, you know, understand. And um, I think once you understand your audience, it's, you know, it doesn't become too difficult because then you try to tailor what you say and, you know, just target it toward their, their interest and then work backwards from there. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Any other questions? Uh, I'd Let like me. to give another example of a customer no. project. Do you that, hear me? Yes. Yes, I hear you. Please uh, briefly explain blockchain, Amazon blockchain. Why we not use Ethereum blockchain in Amazon? I'm sorry, what was that? Why we don't use Ethereum? Ethereum. Ethereum. Oh, Ethereum. Um, I think in this particular customer scenario, um, they didn't have a preference. They didn't have any any background with uh, with blockchain. So we just showed them what we had available with the Amazon uh, managed blockchain. And you know, see how they how receptive they were with that. But in this customer scenario, they didn't have any preference. They didn't have any background. So we introduced uh, what Amazon had available. Okay. Any other questions? Um, I'd like to also give another example. It's more related to IoT, but it's very interesting. I have another customer who is in the manufacturing uh, business. And what they do is they, spe they specify, they're, they're very specific with lab equipment. So things like um, calibration uh, equipment that's specifically used for labs. Uh, so they rent them out to different laboratories. They receive them back as well as, you know, these laboratories would purchase them as well. So they came to us and they said they want to use IoT to find out information like, you know, how, how long do uh, these technicians interact with the equipment? And also as far as shipping to them, you know, they use IoT to measure how long does it take for them to receive the equipment? And also when they receive it back after the rental to see how they can, you know, improve the rental to see, you know, if the equipment is damaged, you know, what happened during the process, you know, how can they offer better, you know, services uh, to the customers um, in addition to, let's say that equipment is very expensive. They also like to estimate, you know, when do they believe that, you know, maintenance would be needed for this equipment. So that was another interesting uh, project I'm working on with my customers. Hi, Jennifer, uh, ma'am. Uh, how, in this particular Hello. case that you just explained, uh, what, yes. what the services, uh, you offered them uh, that uh, AWS services. Yes, so uh, we gave uh, we offer the services IoT Core and uh, IoT uh, Analytics. So those are some of the uh, services that we talked about. Um, so with this customer, uh, we start we just started recently with them. So we were just speaking at a high level, introducing the services. We haven't dived deep yet on any specific use case that they talked about. But that's the next step right now. We're going to look at you know the specific use cases, dive deep on which uh, particular AWS services they're looking to use, and you know just have the POC with them. So we're still in the early stages right now. All right. But I, I thought that was interesting. That's why yeah, I brought it up. Thank you very much for sharing. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. No problem. Ma'am, I have a one question. Uh, did sure. Amazon uh, offer serverless uh, uh, AWS in server, serverless technology? Okay, so I guess your question is, does any of my customers use serverless? Yes, uh, they actually they using a serverless technology in AWS. Um, for this particular manufacturing comp uh, customer, they are mostly just using uh, our VMs, the EC2 VMs. So they haven't used too much uh, serverless, uh, but we were, uh, what we introduced is that they, we had a serverless event, a serverless live event, uh, maybe about a week or two ago. 
So we sent out an invitation for them to go. And the next step would be for us to follow up and see if they have any questions and how we can help. I think, Titi, if your question is, does Amazon use a serverless? Of course we do. This is Lambda. Is, that's where uh, it's all about serverless. But if for this particular customer, I think that's what Jennifer is answering. Is that right? Yes, yes. Yes, that's right. For this particular customer. But yes, I do have other customers who are using a serverless. So, you know, Mo mentioned a Lambda as well. So Lambda and API Gateway. Nice to hear. Thank you, Mo. Oh, you're welcome. No problem at all. Any other questions? Ma'am, I had a question. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, question. Uh, my question is that previously I learned that uh, AWS Kinesis is used for getting real-time data. Yes. Uh, but uh, today I am founding a question, uh, the difference between AWS Kinesis versus MSK. Okay. Uh, but I do, didn't understand uh, this uh, part MSK. Please, uh, if you could explain what is MSK and why it is different from Kinesis. Okay. Um, I think uh, you're talking about managed streaming Kafka. Is that right? Managed yes, streaming Kafka yes, and yes, uh, yes, Kinesis. Yes, ma'am. Um, I do actually had a, I had a customer who was working with managed streaming Kafka. Um, oh. But as far as the technical differences between the two, um, I'm going to have to do a little bit of research, if you don't mind, and I, I can get back to you on that. That's okay, man. Okay. That's okay, man. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Let me, let me take down your name, actually, and I'll make sure I get back to you. Thanks. Yeah, I haven't worked too much with that, so. Um, yeah, you can just send a, a quick Slack message to Jennifer. Okay, sure, no problem. And then Jennifer can respond yes. to you. Yeah. Yes, sure, no problem. I welcome any questions. Yeah, you got it, my dad? me anytime. Okay, yes, sir. Yes, I got that. Um, hi, Jennifer. I had a question. Yes, sure. Uh, I'm, I'm Shami Mon. So um, I was wondering, are most of your customers, um, are they like uh, big enterprises or startups who want to um, like embrace or take into the ML solutions? Yes, yeah, so um, we have a wide range of uh, different customers. Uh, so anywhere from startups to, you know, big uh, enterprise uh, uh, customers. Uh, the accounts that I work with are enterprise customers. So those are uh, customers who are already using AWS and we're just helping them, you know, with uh, what they're using existing and also to help them with uh, new services as well. So yeah, the customers that use AIML, they range from startups to uh, multinational, you know, enterprise to government organizations as well. So yeah, wide range of uh, different customers. But um, let me just take a step back. Um, I'll take more questions, but uh, just to introduce myself, um, my, you know, my name is Jennifer Ng. I've been a solutions architect with uh, AWS for about a year and a half. Uh, I work with enterprise customers um, mainly based out of the Northeast area in, in the United States. Um, I work with customers and mainly, like, like I mentioned, we look at the business objectives and work backwards from there to see how, how AWS can help. And um, before I came to AWS, I worked in financial services. Uh, the, my last role in financial services was as a solutions architect. Uh, I work mainly in an on-premises uh, legacy data center environment. So I work with each of the different application teams of different business units, uh, like let's say fixed income, private banking, alternative investments. I work with them for requests, like if they wanna roll out a new application, they might say to me, oh, we need some new servers, whether physical or virtual. So I work with them on the technical justification as well as the business justification. So on the business side, it would be, you know, if we need to buy new servers, how much would those servers be? Uh, what will be the specifications, and you know, would that would there be good use of the company's money by approaching these physical servers? So you know, from that, and also when we receive the servers, I will work with the provisioning team to make sure that they you know rack and stack the servers correctly, as well as the memory configuration is correct and the uh, any disk storage, whether it's uh, internal directly attached storage, SAN and NAS. So for me, on this, uh, from this on-premises environment, I was very familiar with all the challenges of getting servers, you know, getting the justification, the lead time, 
all that stuff. And that actually was what attracted me to AWS, uh, AWS actually. I realized, you know, it helped me overcome, you know, so, you know, so much of those challenges. And that's how I, you know, came to work at uh, AWS. So that's just, you know, some quick, quick background. So yes, I'd like to continue answering more questions. Uh, yeah. uh, hello, uh, this is Nafir. Uh, I have a Nafir, question. yes, hi. Although you already said you work with, mostly work with the enterprises, but I have a yes. question. Uh, yes. Uh, what are the top AWS services that uh, new startups should look into? Uh, new startups? Um, I haven't worked with too many new startups, but I would say with the, let's say companies that have never had any experience with AWS, I have seen them start to use, depending on what they're looking for, they might, let's say, look at the uh, EC2, for example, they might look at storage, uh, because let's say they're not familiar with AWS, but they want to just try it out. Sometimes they may use S3 for backup, or they might just, you know, use it to test out and see how AWS is. Or um, I have seen other customers, they start using uh, containers, they uh, use ECS service. Um, so it, it varies actually, but I would say it depends. Um, some startups, they might uh, want to, you know, migrate. In that case, you know, they look at EC2. If they want to try new services like a SageMaker, for example, it's a good way for them to, you know, start quickly at low cost. Oh, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, hi, ma'am. Uh, my name is Mahal Duraman. Hello. Yeah, hello. Uh, my question is, what are the biggest challenges of your team when you solve uh, customers' ML problems? Oh, uh, if, what is the biggest uh, challenge when we solve ML problems? Right, for your team. Okay, for my team? Yeah. Uh, um, I can speak for myself, actually. The biggest challenge with so solving ML problems is uh, the technical challenge, I have to say. Uh, for me, uh, there's so many uh, ML services that I have to make sure that I know, at least on a 100 level, all the different services that are available. Uh, we, we do have specialists to help us with a deeper dive, um, but it would be just you know making sure I keep updated with all the services and features that come out. Um, almost on a weekly basis, we, uh, we have new uh, services and features. So keeping up to date on the technology or the services that are available, um, that would be one thing. And also how these services and features can help my customers. So I think that would be the, uh, the biggest challenge. Nice, right. thank you. You're welcome, no problem. Any other questions? I think um, a lot of you, or all of you may be going for the cloud practitioner certification as well. So if you have any questions for that, uh, please feel free. And the questions, you know, it doesn't have to be ML related. So, Jennifer, I was going to ask you one question. As a woman, do you see a difference versus a somebody else? Um, as far as working with customers or within my team? Working in, I, uh, working in data science. As far as a, if a woman wants to build a career in data science, is there a difference, you know, things you need to do differently? You know, a lot of time we don't talk about this kind of stuff, but yeah. I think that we should, you know? Um, is there anything I would, to do differently? Um, I would say I feel like maybe as a woman that I I should you know try even harder to make sure that you know I know all the technical details, all the facts, and just you know make sure that you know that I keep more updated. I think, and that's how to build credibility. I just feel like you know for me it's you know, just to make sure that, you know, I know all the facts or the uh, right, correct information. And most importantly, um, 
you know, not everyone can know everything. So I think one of the main things to establish trust is just to, uh, you know, if there's something that you don't know, which, you know, I'm sure all of us will come upon, you know, every now and then is uh, just to be, just to be honest about that. And, um, and uh, just, and then if there's something that you're not sure of, just to, you know, dive deeper on that and make sure you learn it. So if you hear a term that you're not familiar with, you know, I will look that up and make sure you do know that for, for you know, for next time. And uh, just make sure you, you know, keep keep on top of the technology and keep on learning. I think that's that's one of the main things. And I found it, you know, very rewarding actually, just to keep on learning and keeping up to date. If you ask me, I found that the women are much, much better at data science than the men to begin with, because uh, there is a oh, lot. Is right? <laughs> yeah, because there is a lot more. Data science is all about data, is that right? It really has data points that you actually work with. Yeah. Uh, and you have to look at the holistic big picture first and before you can dive deep. Uh, a lot of time, right. I think we focus on a single technology or single threaded elements in a, like a developer, I'm just going to task because, oh, they told me to add Cognito or they told me to add user authentication. And I just focus on that. Like a lot of time, you got to always go back and see the big picture. Like you talked about working backward, meaning that I have to see what the customer is. Customer don't care about that. I use Cognito or a, a database for user authentication. They don't really care. But I do because I'm building it something. Maybe I'm building serverless versus uh, uh, the others. So uh, the customer cares about how easy for them to use it without any effort. And they want to just get the result. They don't, they don't have time. Nobody has time for anything else. What I found out is that um, if you can think big and work backward from the customer, like, okay, let me just go up. Okay, I know that I have to build that solution. I got to dive significantly deep to do it. But again, I have to make sure that it fits the bigger picture. That's what I was just yeah. giving everybody today is what is that bigger picture actually mean? And I feel like that that's, we miss that. And we have to keep ourselves reminded of what is that big picture that I'm uh, getting. Like every morning, I know a lot of, lot of developers do scrum meetings is a very quick seven minutes, five minutes, two minutes, or, you know, uh, scrum meetings, very great. But in that meeting, we talk about our problems, you know, what are we, uh, problems we have, what we need to accomplish, what we accomplished already, you know, we don't talk details about there. At that time, we need to be reminded of, okay, what is the big picture? Okay, we're looking for an education system overhaul for the nation. You know, every time you talk about the big picture, it actually rejuvenates us. It makes us, oh yeah, that's true. I know I'm having so much trouble in these things, but okay, let's think about the big picture. It just changes the whole thing. I'll tell you one thing, as a manager, what I look at, uh, uh, and I'm also, Jennifer, I think you and I started almost the same day, is that right? I started October uh, 27. Yes, I think so. D didn't we start? I started in uh, September. Yeah, around the same time. I started in September towards late September. Yeah, yeah. Because I came to the office and I saw her. She is the only one when I came in first. So, um, <laughs> you know, one of the things that I found out is that as a manager, is that you know we always have to see how to facilitate and break the barrier is that right because every, everybody and that what is that barrier what do i mean by that let me explain to everybody one of the big thing that i see first of all thinking big think from customer business objective that's number one thing that's a big barrier i found out when we are architect we are architecting a technical solution a lot of time we don't think big but think the business outcome first okay so that's number one barrier uh, so meaning that when I talk, I shouldn't be talking, oh, I have this particular problem and only focus on that one. I need to figure out how does it fit into the big picture, the broad picture, how, how do they fit in? Next thing, what we think about is that, okay, when we have a problem, we have an ego problem, meaning uh, I need to fix something, but I'm not asking for help. Uh, I, I'm trying and getting frustrated. There is absolutely nothing wrong if you tell, I don't know, if you raise your hand and you say, I don't know, does anybody know? Can anybody help? A lot of time we feel shy about that. And there is absolutely no reason for to be shy uh, about anything. Uh, at Amazon, we have a name for it. We call it the imposter syndrome. 
uh, because I come from a company, I know networking a lot and SAP quite a bit. And when I go to a meeting and for SAP and networking, I thought I'm an expert, but you go to the meeting, you have no idea what they're talking about. Now you can't say anything because you are the expert. They brought that expert, is that right? The expert don't know what to say because they have no idea what they're talking about. What I found, and that is the imposter syndrome that we have. What happens at Amazon, at AWS specifically, is that people come in and they're the expert and they ask you, oh, I have no idea what you're talking about. Put it in layman terms, simplify it so that I can understand. Now you're thinking about this guy has PhD in cloud in AWS, has been working in AWS for 10 years. He says that he doesn't know something and I know more than him. So I would say that that is absolutely truth. Amazon makes you real, real humble. Things change so much. There is no way we can know most of the stuff. In fact, forget about it. We can just only know that much, that little, you know. We have an idea about what's going on as a solution architect. The job is really tough because you got to know almost everything, how each one of them work. You don't have to know all, all of them in detail but you need to know one or two of them in very detail so that you become a specialist on that one. So that's the second thing is that barrier of I don't know and be humble and start learning. And whatever you knew yesterday, you are great. You knew everything about it. No problem. You're the best. But today it doesn't really mean anything because so much change. Last year, AWS has 2,758 new services and major enhancement announced at reInvent. So how is that possible? Like every day there would be, what is it, 12 of them? Are you gonna be able to finish learning 12 new things every day? It's not possible. It's never possible. So you just have to accept that particular piece. So what I did, is, and, and that's a really big thing, in my opinion. The third thing that I'll tell you, which is extremely important as well, which is look from the, first of all, customer as a business initiative, I told you on the first one, but on the third one is empathy is extremely important. Look from the customer perspective. Customer says, I want to do these things. Great, the executive told you that, but you are daily working with the technical guy. And the technical guy wants to do something else. You got to put yourself in that technical guy's shoes and make sure that guy gets the glory. That guy becomes the important. The person that you are working for, the thing that you're building, always give other people credit. So what happens is that at that time, they would like to work with you. Otherwise, if you take all the credit, hey, I'm going to fix it for you and I'm doing it. I'm, I, 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 me, me, me. When you start saying that, they don't like to work with you and they don't like to share information with you. And they don't, that's a wrong uh, partnership, you know, because you want to win. Of course you want to win, but you want to win, actually give credit to, by giving credit to other people. There's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with it. If, because if somebody gets credit, guess what? That person, when you tell them, just think about yourself. If somebody told you, hey, you did a great job, I really like the things, and you actually show true interest, you would really want to work with that person. Oh, you know, that person appreciates me. So this is a really important thing I feel like that we miss in the tech community because we are always there to show something off that I know or we do. That's okay, but you cannot be that person. Everybody should be willing to always work with you. You cannot be the person they say, you know what, uh -oh, he's doing it, I'm not part of it. So you don't want to do that. And that is extremely important. You know, at Amazon term, we call it earn trust. That's one of our leadership principle. And that's extremely important. So you wanted to empathize, you wanted to learn, you wanted to do it, no question there, but you wanna give credit. Everything you do, give credit to other people. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. Give credit to other people. It's going to come back anyway in multifold. I feel like you got to do these three things to become really successful in professional life. And, and not only that, you're going to get support always coming. Whenever you uh, have an issue, people are going to continuously give you support. Uh, you know, we had problems. We always do. It's technology. Like Warner Vogel always tells, technology is bound to fail. 
most of the time it's going to fail at scale. What does it mean? Meaning that you did a POC, great works. Whenever you're trying to deploy, you have a thousand things, boom, it just fails miserably, you know? Um, so again, I just, I wanted to give you guys a few things. Today, I wanted to have a conversation. Everybody's coming back from Eid. I want you guys to be rejuvenated. You have all the, uh, you know, videos. I'm going to, uh, uh, I'll play, uh, paste the playlist. Uh, we're going to do one thing. I think I'm going to ask Jennifer to do it as well or somebody else. This is a YouTube playlist I'm posting here. I'll, I'll post in the Slack channel as well. Uh, you have it in the pinned post, just so you know, when you go to the playlist, you're going to see all of them right there. So next thing that I wanted you to focus on is the data components, type of data, stream data, batch data, various databases. You know some of the databases already, why we use database and SQL versus NoSQL, uh, you know, how, wh what is ETL, you know, extract, transform and load or ELT extract load and transform you know glue and I, kinesis is a stream you know when do we use what and for what reason because as a data scientist you're going to be playing with data it's not only making the model it's also knowing the data so data site it would be the next thing i want you guys to be prepared and learn all those things that that's what we intend to do next week or in next two weeks we're going to be working with uh, next few videos are going to be all about the data components okay so i have actually provided you the hash for today and you'll have access for 48 hours uh event engine hash do you did you guys get that one does anybody else need it i'm gonna post it in the machine learning uh page as well okay so everybody has it Okay, and I'm also going to post over there the YouTube channel. Give me a second. So you have it in that, uh, because after we finish the Zoom, you got, you should have it. But again, I wanted to just, oops, sorry. Let me just, be hash received acknowledged. Thank you very much. Yes, sir, appreciate that. Sir, um, what's about the hash uh, code for this purpose? Event engine. Are you familiar with the event engine? No, sir. Oh, you have never participated in event engine? Like no. always, we do a test. Remember, we do a practice with event engine. You don't remember? Okay, hold on. Give me one second. that's okay i'm gonna give you the link for the event engine as well okay i'll post it in the machine learning section okay so event engine is i thought everybody knew sorry for that um event engine is somewhere where you can practice yourself you have access to all aws services you wanted to do SageMaker, fantastic. You log in, you don't need credit card or anything like that. You can log into this system, okay? Uh, give me one second, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Or I'm gonna ask one of you guys to show me, how about that? Um, yeah, like here. I just posted a link to the event engine, go there, dashboard.eventengine.run. And then there is a hash, FBA4. Uh, who wants to show it? Can, okay. Uh, somebody uh, take, uh, who wants to show it? Show me how to do uh, yes, into event engine. Shall I, sir? Sorry, I can say. Hold on, show again. Somebody else say it again also. Who else? I think you're on mute if you're talking. Who, who else want to show? Sir, I can. Okay, Majar, let me see. Yep, share your screen. Show them how to log into Event Engine. Sumaya, notice how to log into Event Engine, okay? First, 
dashboard.eventengine.run, okay? I think log out first. You got to log out. Yes, sir. Because already he claimed the hash. No worries. Just, yeah, do it again. That's good. Okay. So what can you do? You can log into event engine. You don't need credit card. You don't need anything. You have full AWS, all services, all the videos that you have watched, go to the pinned post. Okay. If you go to the pinned post, there are a lot of things you can do. Okay. That you see there is a, a hash I have posted in Slack channel. And here write that box number four you paste that hash okay okay and once you post that hash and click on it and go back to the other other screen go back to your regular event engine now then you'll get to there then it's gonna say aws console you click on aws console yep see accept term and login so you just email one time password, you'll get that. And that's pretty much, that's how you go get it essentially. So it's just signing, you put it in your email address and they sent you a one time passcode and you just put it in that passcode from your email and you just log in. Maja, thank you for doing that. Here, you got a one-time passcode. So when you put that one-time passcode in, it's going to tell you, you know, it's going to take you to that event engine dashboard. Event engine is, again, it's like full AWS access. Here, you can set your team name, put your name there, you know. And then go to AWS console. You can see SSH key if you want to use it as well. So when you go to the and open console, and that's it, you're in. Now you can see all those AWS services and you can search over there. Yeah, the, all of the services. You want to play with the SageMaker, you click on SageMaker, uh, which is the machine learning stuff, all the things you learn. I was telling you guys about the VPC. You can just type in over there VPC and you know, boom, you have the VPC and you can start building the VPC, the networks, and all those things, everything that you want to play. And you have to play these things before you can pass the uh, solution architect certificate. And this is, if you do this, it's going to make you easier for your uh, cloud practitioner course too, because you know hands-on at that time. Sumaya ki Yes, sir. Uh, but uh, even in, in engine for uh, practicing, right? Yeah. That... Okay. Did you ever log in before here? No, uh, I didn't log in. Uh, even engine, I logged in uh, AWS console. Uh, oh, switch. you logged into your own account, is that right? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, good. But this is easier because you can run the SageMaker and there is no cost for you. Oh, okay. So you can use any of those things. You can run models, train the models. That's why I gave you 48 hours. So you can actually, if you want to do some modeling, you can do here. Retail account for the Amazon is amazon.com account. Like I have an Amazon. If I buy something from Amazon, I use that retail account. I think that's a question from yes, you. 
Anybody else has any question? I know we are almost at our time. It's two minutes left. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that recalibrate after Eid, we forget about everything because big celebration. Sir, uh, Sir, we have to do it. Sir, we have to do no, it. No, no. We have to do it. 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 We have to do তারপরে ওই পুরো টাকাটা আমি আমরা ফেরত দেওয়ার ব্যবস্থা করব ইনফ্যাক্ট হাইটেক পার্ক অথরিটি থেকে আসলে দিবে আর তোমরা যদি ক্লাউড প্র্যাকটিশনার যারা পাস করতেছো যারা ভিডিও এসএন এর যারা আছো তারা কিন্তু ভিডিও এসএন থেকে ক্লাউড প্র্যাকটিশনারটা বাই ইটসেলফ তোমরা পেয়ে যাবা আই থিং একজন আমারে প্রশ্ন করতেছিল যদি ভিডিও এসএন এর মেম্বার হয় কিন্তু আমি আমার সাথে যেটা ডিল তিনটা পরীক্ষা পাস করলে সবগুলো একসাথে ফেরত দিবে 6 মাসের টার্গেট I have another call that I need to go and I want to really thank Jennifer. Thank you very much for attending today. I really appreciate that. Hopefully we're going to hear from you and learn from you one of the immersion days. You can choose whatever immersion day you wanted to do. Sir, last year term is keep guessing keep holding this six month here. Post Kora say to me they call yet a machine learning yet a day I say. সেটা হলো যে ছয় মাসের মধ্যে যদি তুমি তিনটা পাস করতে পারো প্র্যাকটিশনার সলিউশন আর্কিটেক্ট এবং মেশিন লার্নিং স্পেশালিটি এই তিনটা কোর্স এটা আমার টার্গেট আর কি যে তোমাদের এটা এই তিনটা আশা করতেছি এই যে শিখতেছো না সো ইউ গেট এ গুড আউটকাম থ্রি সার্টিফিকেট ইউল হ্যাভ ক্লাউড প্র্যাকটিশনার সলিউশন আর্কিটেক্ট অ্যাসোসিয়েট অ্যান্ড মেশিন লার্নিং স্পেশালিটি ওয়েন ইউ টেক অল দোজ কোর্স অ্যান্ড ইউ ফ্যাস থ্রি অফ দেম you get reimbursement for all the cost of that certificate ekta 150 dollar ekta you know 100 dollar 150 dollar or i think 200 dollar something like that total je taka ta hoy ei taka ta tumi ferot paba and the machine learning to hak post korte hoy ta oi pura detail ta ha bolo answer machine learning er je vendor exam or license exam eta eta aws or another platform it's all in aws okay. all three of them are in aws ha abar bolo so can i uh, take just a uh, minute to ask miss jennifer one last question can i about the cloud i don't know jennifer if he, she has time but yeah go for it ask for it yeah sure i have a few minutes yeah. So uh, I was going through the data analytics ramp up guide. I was following that guide. And uh, now I'm planning to uh, get enrolled in the cloud practitioner exam. So I didn't really follow the cloud practitioner exam ramp up guide uh, since the beginning. And, and uh, I'm just... trying to look up the things i'm ready for the cloud practitioner exam if you can tell from your experience yes um actually on the aws training site aws.training there is i believe an exam preparation um video i think it's an online course maybe about an hour or so uh what i use i went through that class and if i felt that i was familiar with it that's when i went for the cloud practitioner certification so yes i think um mo is sharing his screen right now so aws.training um as you can see here it's aws cloud practitioner essentials there may also be another one that's exam readiness yeah exam I readiness actually go through yes i will go through at least those two videos and make sure that you're comfortable before going for the exam all right all right thank you yes Oh, Thank you're welcome. No problem. So what I did, I actually went through the, uh, I think, one or two videos online. I made sure that I was familiar with, with the material. And then uh, that's when I went to take the exam. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Sorry. No problem. If Thank any you. questions yeah. come up, yeah, if any questions come up later, feel free to ping me on Slack. Yes, will do. Thank yeah. You. The certification okay. exam readiness that you see, you click here all certification exam readiness and cloud practitioner essentials 
You're going to find a lot of them, just so you know. Choose the one that you like, you need. Yeah, thank you very much. Sir. Okay. So here is the exam readiness. Our Sumaya, here is the course that we want. We want you to do cloud practitioner. This is in the AWS certification site. It says cloud practitioner, solution architect associate, and machine learning specialty. There are 12 certification you can get from Amazon. Cloud practitioner, solution architect, and machine learning specialty, okay? These are the three courses in the certificate. And if you click on this button, it will take you to that. What is that machine learning specialty? How do you prepare for it? And all the details, okay? Exam guide, everything is there for each one of them. Anything you click on it, you're gonna get that. Make sense? First team, did that make sense for you too? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Sumaya, did it sir. make sense for you? Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, I had a question, sir. Yes, go for it. May I say? Sir, you suggested to go for cloud practitioner, then architect. Uh, so uh, I don't know if I can qualify for ar architect, but uh, the from uh, Googling and uh, some other forum posts, I saw that some other uh, certifications are easier to achieve. So uh, the reimbursement uh, uh, thing will be acceptable for if I qualify for three uh, certifications. No, 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 no. There is a reason for it. Cloud practitioner knowing the cloud okay, knowledge. Sir. Just yes, foundation. Sir. Solution architect, how to design, yes, sir. how to architect the solution. And machine learning specialty, you know, teaches you all the machine learning components because that's what we're building. We're building you as data scientists. Uh, and I'm going to answer your question differently. Uh, you said it's easy. Yes, sir. Easy doesn't cut People it are... in life. That's not going to work for you. You go the easy route, whatever the easy thing you want to do, you do. This is what you need. This is not tough either. This is what you need to have your foundation for if, if you want to become data scientist. Let's say I want to cook uh, chicken. I mean, murgir ranna korbo. I'm bolo ashle murgi ranna kora onek kothin. Tache bolong ami bhat ranna kori. Of course, you can do that, but you're not gonna get the same thing. Bhat ranna korle ki tumi murgi papa? No, sir. Okay, that's the answer. Thank you, sir. Okay, good. I was just giving them an example. So, you know, if you cook rice, you get rice. If you cook chicken, you get chicken. Okay, any other question? Sir, I have a question. Yes. Sir, when you said that you were talking about the solution that you were talking about, you were talking about the solution that you were talking about. So, when you were talking about Jennifer Mam, you were talking about the question that you were talking about. So, I'm going to ask you, चिंचिलो जी, आम्रा जो दी कुन्ह एक तो पार्टिकुलर शिक्षा नहीं काज पुरी तो ले शिक्षित पे तो प्रथम दिके शुरू करते होले क्लास वन थे के फाइबर बात चादर के शुरू करते होले अथवा यूनिवर्सिटी यूनिवर्सिटी कोर्स कारीकुलम नहीं करते होले बने जी कुन्ह एक तो साइट थे के करते होले शिक्षित रे सारे कोम की कुनो किच्छ Choose anything you like. I mean, well, na. it's up to you. I can individually korba. to me, I have to choose korba class five near. I have class five at data available, class eight at data available, class one at data, whatever it is that you can find, do it. Start. So when I'm to catch for it, university near sir, tell me the university, I'm a computer science student, the BTC or you can get classical from here. Okay, if you think it's the data, that's good. I don't think you have university data. You might have one or two or five university, but if you have data for all university, great. All you, university. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. If you have all university, all students. Okay, sir. Yeah. Sir, I had a question. If you have a question, 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 something like that. Who can I ask? Black a post for us. You guys have to read. Huh? October is the duration of the duration. Something like that, yes. Thank you, sir. 
খরচ হয় তোমরা ফ্রি ফ্রি পাচ্ছ এই যে ইয়েগুলা এই ইভেন্ট ইঞ্জিনের অ্যাক্সেস এডাব্লিউএস অ্যাক্সেস দুইশো ডলার করে ক্রেডিট ইউ না আমি হিসাব নিকেশ করে দেখছি প্রায় সত্তর হাজার ডলার আমার এখানে খরচ হয়েছে সোফা আমাদের কোম্পানি থেকে সত্তর হাজার ডলার ইজ নট এ ভেরি স্মল অ্যামাউন্ট বুঝছো আমরা মনে করি যে হ্যাঁ আমাকে তো দিবেই তারা তো আমাদের করতে বাধ্য আমরা কেউই কিন্তু করতে বাধ্য না এটা তোমার চিন্তা করতে হবে যে দিস ইজ ফর ইউ ফর ইউর ওন ক্যারিয়ার সো টেক ইট ভেরি সিরিয়াসলি people are helping you but when you actually want to do it there is a lot of charge the people are going to charge for it okay acha any other question otherwise i actually have to go to a meeting and i'm sure jennifer has a lot of things to do as well but thank you very much i really appreciate the mother support ha huh? yes thank you very much yeah. have a good day uh, it's I all for you time. remember it is all for you guys and we are just helping you out if you are willing Hello. to take the help হ্যাঁ বলো স্যার আই অ্যাম ফ্রম ট্রিপলি ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড সো স্যার হাউ बेनिफिशियल আর দিস থ্রি एग्जाम्स ফর মি আই অ্যাম ফ্রম অ্যাকাউন্টিং ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড জাস্ট সো ইউ নো ইটস অলসো গুড ইট ডিপেন্ডস ইফ ইউ ওয়ান্ট টু হ্যাভ ইওর ক্যারিয়ার ইন আইটি দেন ইটস এক্সট্রিমলি ইম্পর্টেন্ট বিকজ এখন থেকে কিছুদিন পরে ইটস গোনা বি অল ডেটা ওরিয়েন্টেড ক্যারিয়ার so if you want to be that one if we want to be machine learning expert you need to know these things and everything is going to be cloud whatever people says right now five years from now everything is going to be cloud people say we're never going to go into the cloud everybody's in cloud already now everything is going to be cloud based so the practitioner solution architect teaches you how to do it in the cloud machine learning teaches you how to play with the data so I- another question yeah uh- if i pass all three exams what can i look forward to very good i think you got to go back and check some of the videos this is if you want to again build your career in it information technology you must have this proficiency once you have it when you pass this test you know there is a lot of companies are really looking for good people and you would be the right person you know and everybody wants to hire you just so you know if you have the right skills okay. so, sir. Yes, sir. okay thank you very much i really appreciate that thanks again you know we'll see you next thursday hopefully we don't have to remind is the same uh you know put it in your calendar tomorrow jodi google calendar take put it in your calendar as a reminder Uh, we do it uh, you know 8 pm bangladesh time every thursday all right thank you have a good day okay, take care bye thank take you care, everyone sir and thank you, thank you very much bye take care bye bye